And uh, if some of you have picked up on it, I mean, a lot of very diligent scheduling went into making this happen. We, we, we went to great expense to get Jim Warren to do a Thunder Creek streamer before we took a break to Thanksgiving. And what would be a more appropriate transition from that is basically the same fly designed to be a topwater fly, the Madam X. So Robert Conrad is going to take this to the next level. And I think you guys will all be pleasantly surprised. So Robert, with no further ado, my friend, sure. you are up sure. and uh, speak away. It's going to be a little bit different today. We're going to tie we're going to tie Matamax, but there's a little story behind it. Three or four years ago, I've been following Barry O. Clark for a while. I don't know if you guys know him, the Featherbender. But three or four years ago, he sends out an email that says if he's getting rid of 30 years of his flies. So send him 25 bucks and whatever your local currency is, he'll send you a dozen flies. So first thing you notice is it doesn't know how to count, right? Send like 22 or 23 flies. Two of those flies were Madame Max. And that was kind of interesting to me because when I first started fly tying, I had no clue what to tie, right? I mean, that was one of the most frustrating things. So I bought this essential trout fly book, specifically because it says, okay, here's the 34 flies you need, tie these, you'll be good, right? So there's some variation to it, but that was exactly what I needed because there's so much uh, so much you can tie, it really, really confused me on what I should tie and what I shouldn't tie. So that was like 20 years ago, and I haven't bought fly tying books in a while, but uh, Barry has a new book, and one of the things he's doing to promote his new book is he's very, uh, very active on, on media, right? So you can email him and ask him questions and this and that, and he'll get right back to you. So I had this card from him that, that was part of the deal, and so I thought it might be fun if we, because when, when I saw these, and I'm going to pass these around so you guys can take a closer look at it. But when I saw these, my first concept was, besides the fact the guy's a fantastic fly tire, right? He's got some decent materials, right? And when I started tying, when I started tying these flies, you know, I just had grab bag deer hair. So you get, you know, 10 colors instead of one pack. Uh, rubber legs from bass skirts rather than, you know, fancy, fancy rubber legs. So bad that I didn't have many hooks, right? So I just said, these are, I'm gonna, we're gonna do one on a 9672 hook. It's the right size hook, it's three X long, but it's a nymph hook because at the time, you know, I could, couldn't get that many hooks, right? So I had my fly, I had my dry fly hooks, my nymph hooks, and I bought three X and that's it. Everything I tied had to fit on one of those three hooks. So I'm sure that everybody has been down that road. It's probably not too unique a road until you start to, you start to pick up your supplies. So, one of the things I, th I always thought when I had these is, you know, someday, because most of these flies, he's got videos out. He does like 500 videos. So there's videos on YouTube for all of these, right? So I thought, oh, I'm going to go back and look at them and see if I can tie these, right? So am I limited by my skills or am I limited by my materials? That was my basic question. So for the club, I thought it'd be fun to get all his materials. Uh, and we have examples of what he's tying. Uh, these are, unfortunately, this would have been great if I could have gone back in my fly boxes and found the ones I tied, but I couldn't. So I went back to the book, I pulled out my old materials, and I just tied the first, the first one of each I tied, right? So I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll tie with some older materials. Uh, you know, we're talking, um, what kind of thread is this? Danville thread, 8 aught. Probably been a while since you guys reached your Dan, because everybody's using uni or something else. And new materials, Venus, right? So he's real big on, um, what's he call it? Dyneema, right? So I had no idea where you buy Dyneema. So I emailed him and I said, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. I got these flies a while back for the club. And I'm going to do this for the club. So he sent an email back, said, great idea. I, I, I help you any way I can. This is where you get this. This is where you get that. And why don't you tie a couple of flies, send me some pictures, and I'll see if I can give you some pointers. And I said, oh, that's pretty cool. So we've been going back and forth for a while. And so that's what we're going to do. So that's easier. And oh, yeah. And I did. I haven't bought a book in a long time, but I bought this yesterday. Pass this around for you guys to see. It's an interesting concept. So he does these flies, and I haven't had time to really go through it, but he's got this QR code, right? So if you scan that QR code, you go right to his video, 
And then you go page by page of his instruction. So he says, watch the video, tie the flies, and then he says, feel free to text me online or email me online with your questions. And firsthand, I know that he responds, right? So that would be fun to do. So I'm gonna pass this stuff around. You guys can take a look. And but it's like, it'd be like having a, you know, video uh, tutor, basically. Get the book for 16 bucks on Amazon, get the videos all, all ready to go. And, and, you know, you're pretty much set. If you have any problems, just call them up. So I have a couple, I set up to do this place. One with older materials and one with new materials. So, do you want to tie one first? And I mean, tie one yeah, that's fine. So, the other thing, the one that says one is the first one, the one that says two is the second one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of complicated. <laughs> I tried to make it easy. <laughs> okay. So, it's a very, it's very easy fly, actually, which is another reason why I, why I thought we'd tie it both ways. But it, it's done very differently. I mean, the, 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 it was done by Mike Larson in the uh, like the mid '80s or so. And so this is the nymph hook, actually, but it's a size 10 3 X Danville 80 uh, spun cotton fiber. So. You're going to lay down the thread base. Rob, can you move your uh, bottom mask out of the way? Mm, yeah. Lay down the thread base. And you want to wind back. I right, go back to about the hip. And basically, that gives you an idea how long to put your tail, right? So. You're going to take your material for your tail. Take about, it's not a big tail. You don't want a big tail. Run about a dozen, two dozen uh, strands, right? So that's probably too many. Run them out. Oh, and the other thing I didn't mention that, you know, it kind of worked out because we have the, the tie a right? So one of the flies on the tie a was a Madam X. So I said, perfect. I got the materials. I'm going to tie it for the club. I got the old materials. I can tie a bunch of these and hopefully try to get better. Right? So I was able to, to work that into it. And so I had tied a bunch of these and hopefully I've learned something. And actually a couple of them I thought came out pretty good. So the first thing I do is mess up with the stacker. So you take about 12 to 24, somewhere around there of the uh, deer here, and you want to go, you don't want a long tail. You want it about half the length of this hook shank, and I always find myself going too long. If you go too long, it doesn't work because you got to go really long on your leg. So measure it up, trade hands, oh, I'm sorry, take, go back to about a quarter of the way to up your hook, right? So the way this is traditionally tied, measure it up, start some loose wraps coming back to gain control of it, and then start to tighten up. And you want this to stay on top of the hook. So pick up the tail and walk it back. And then work it back up. And you want to end up, I need to go a little farther up, so I'm messing up already, but you want to go up to about a quarter of the hook, right? Pick that up, cut it up. So you get all your ends out of the way. You don't have to worry about it being too clean up here because you're using that real estate layer. Right now, you're just going to wrap it in with your thread and your typical, you know, start to get a tapered body. And if you have the right color thread, originally this was tied just using thread. So like any popular fry, there's dozens of variants now. So you can make them different colors. They got Royal Coachman type patterns. They got with, uh, uh, what do you call them? The parachute types, 
patterns, but we do have floss, and this is actually even cheaper than cheap floss. Floss in your package is Danville's floss strand, right? And the legs are just bass uh, skirts. This is what I usually use for legs. You could get these for you know a dozen for five bucks or so. Lots of colors. Just scratch, literally, when I serve fly tying, I would never buy one thing. I'd always buy the mix packs, right? So the mix packs of the floss were actually, you know, your, your good old 10 colors for five bucks in the, in the spool of the floss, right? So that's what we had to work with. So that's what's in this package. So we have the paper started. I'm going to tie this oh, actually wrong. I'm getting my patterns mixed up now. So now you want to get about, I don't know, about three sixteenths an inch worth of this if you twist it, right? So by that I mean, if you take this and twist it, you want about three sixteenths an inch. I don't know how else to, to put it. Comb it out. Stack it. As Jim knows, this is the hard part, right? So you want to go, see, I did it already. That's way too long a tail. So this will not be a good fly because the hair isn't long enough. But you want to go about a quarter inch in front of your hook eye, cut it straight, and transfer this because you're going to bend it back. So this is the hard part. You want to end up with your your body material here, it's going to fold back. So you start with a couple of loose wraps, pull it, but you're not trying to flare it because you want it to stay on top of the hook. And I'm kind of moving my fingers back, so I'm getting it with loose wraps. Now at this point in time, you can see that it's back on the hook. It's loose wraps, so you can push it back up to the eye. So that helps. It's an easy way to cheat, right? And if you do this right, which I very rarely do, you don't have any twist in this, right? So you want it all up top without it twisting. At this point in time, you want to trim your fibers or your whatever they're called. Get those out of the way. And then you can continue to build up your tapered body. So now you got this one transition here you're trying to smooth out. So I'm going to be there a while. And then come out to the front where you have all your little stubs of hair, tie those in. And this does not have to be perfect. If it is perfect, you don't need the floss. But I'm going to put the floss on regardless of the, how this comes out. So the one of the tricks that Barry told me was all the business end of this fly is on the bottom. So when you're wrapping this up, focus on the bottom because nobody's going to see the top anyhow. It's all going to be covered. So for both styles, the original style and this style, you basically you're worried about the top of the fly. Okay, that's good. So now we're going to put on the Danville Floss. Stuff's pretty slick. I always bend it back over to tie it in, get it in good. And now you want to go back to the point you started. Remember, we brought this up. There's a quarter left. You want to be back. So you got a, about a quarter left, right? So we're going to wrap in the floss. And once again, you should probably, if you have a rotary vise, twist it so you're looking at the bottom. This, that's the important part. The rest is going to be covered with deer hair. And then bring it back up. And tie that off. I can find my end. I don't think I'm doing a good job of that, but it'll work. Okay. So if you've done this okay to date, 
You're going to take the, just like we did last week, Mark was absolutely right, but the same type of pattern. You're going to take this, pull it back, and keep it high because you want this on top of the hook. You want that bottom to stay yellow. So, you know, usually wrap into it, but hold this very high when you're wrapping into it, right? So, all you're doing is holding down the head there. So, pull out anything that loosened up. We can trim this a touch. That's extra floss. So, so far, so good. It's a little short. It actually came out okay. The tail, tail was matching the length pretty good. So, all we have left to do is tie in two legs. So, for the Madam X, the classic style of tying in these legs is put that in there. Put that in there and pull the front legs down. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish because now all I have to do is. That's just classically how they say a Madam Max, you want it to plop on the water that way. It's supposed to be a grasshopper fermentation. Yeah, I'm just going to say if it was better, it flat. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's not the way Mr. Clark does it, but that's the way that all the books say to do it. And then tie this off even. So that would be the classical way of tying a Madam X. And what I didn't mention, I forgot to, I should have said earlier, I actually had way more luck fishing this, which is a cricket pattern, right? It's the exact same thing in all black. So you could go either grasshopper or cricket, four materials, real easy to tie. You can knock those out of your tie box out of your 34 slots. Okay, I got my grasshopper covered, I got my cricket covered, but uh, either way, they're tied the same way. So that's package number one. So why don't we tie that, pass those out, we'll tie that, and then we'll go over the second way of doing it, which is really different than the first way. So I have all these examples up here of ways to screw up, right? So this one, my floss is too short, my body's too short. Uh, here one is the wings are too short. I didn't get it back to the end. The wings are too short. So lots and lots of times that I messed up. But on this fly, I actually was able to get a couple that I was happy with, which are completely different than this is the one of these, I had to look on the bottom again. So this was my first tie when I just pulled it out of the box, no practice, hadn't done it for a while, but this was kind of like a baseline. Okay, this is probably what I would have tied it like 20 years ago. I literally had the hopes, I had, the, had everything I needed, but it was just a mess, right? So practice does help. So once again, we're starting with the packet labeled one. There's a hook in there, a piece of deer hair, some floss, and a couple rubber legs. So be ready. So lay your thread base. Back to the point of the hook. Bring it back to about three quarters of the, you want about a quarter of the hook shank left out there. Then you want to grab somewhere between a dozen, two dozen strands of the deer hair. You don't want it too thick because you're, it's hard to keep it on top of the hook if you get too many strands. It wants to roll over. And if it rolls over, it's uh, kind of defeats the pattern of this. But like I said, I'm always struggling myself with 
making the tail too long. You really only want it about half of the length of the hook gap. So something like that. You're gonna transfer it to a pinch roll. You're really not trying to flare it. As you go back, this comes up so you stay on top of the hook and start to give it more pressure to capture it. Hopefully it won't roll on you. Back up. Yeah. You know, I'm going to take it a little farther forward again. So you see that this is rolling, but that's okay because if it rolls on you, you can put it back to where it's supposed to be. The other thing you can do is a time mode trick of putting some head cement on your hook so it, it may not roll on you so much. And you have to wait for it to dry, of course. If you think the bit of your uh, tail too long, what's it do? Well, you're supposed to have, no, it's just an aesthetic thing, right? You're supposed to have your tails and your uh, Wing. wings the same length, right? So if I look at the ones he does, you know, that was one of the things I said, damn it, how do you do that every time, right? So, I mean, that's pretty pretty close to perfect, right? So that that's just totally aesthetic. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, I got all these ones up here where, where I got all these, you know, more. I thought I did about, well, I did a hundred of them, right? Because I already tied for the pythons. Probably about 10 of each style I was happy with, right? So, no, not even 10 of each style. Five of each style I was happy with. All right, so I'm assuming everybody's done with that. So now take over, like, like I said, if you twist it, you're looking for about 3 sixteenths. Once again, if you get too much and, and cut it towards the hide because you want all the length you can get. But if you get too much, once again, it's just very hard to keep on top of the hook. We're going to stack it. Put your, pull out your short ones, I guess. Put your tails, the tip so they line up with the tail. Now you want about a quarter inch is the right amount for the fold back. Not an eighth, won't be enough. About that quarter inch there, that will be the right distance. That's what that's your right hand. Hold it in. And do some pinch wraps. You start to get a hold of it. Helps if you pull it back to the top of the hook. And start to get more aggressive with your tension as you move back. And once again, you see how it's moved from the hook? The hook guy, very simple. You haven't got it bound yet, you can just push it back up. So now you're where you want to be there. Continue to tie in. See it just twist it on me? That's the hard part is keeping it on top, but it's not that big a deal because if you don't have it tight, you can just twist it back. Come in, clip off your butts. Okay, so far so good, except that's still twitching on me like crazy. So if you pinch it with your finger, now you can start to crank it and still, I literally did a 180. That's the hard part of this. But I'm starting to gather up all the butts. 
Once again, I'm going to focus on the back, on the underside of the fly, because the top literally doesn't matter. It's all going to be covered with deer hair anyhow. And start to build up the taper. Just to go past the hook eye. It's supposed to be at the hook. Oh, the quarter inch. Quarter, quarter inch. inch. If you go quarter inch, your, your length is pretty good. See? That length is pretty good. And it's not an eighth inch, it's a quarter inch. Uh -huh. So you should have your tail on top, your wing on top. Nice smooth underbody. Um, once again, at this point in time, you can come up, put in your floss. And this is tied traditionally in uh, hopper yellow type stuff. But the other common variant is red and even coachman with peacock or and red silk in the middle. And it's a very common pattern in all the beginner fly tying books because it's so you know relatively easy to do. And like I said, it fills that niche. Okay, so there we go. The floss is wrapped up. Tie that in. Put off your excess. Come back to the that quarter way back from the eye point. So these are actually the originals by Barry. You guys can see them. One's on a 14, one's on a 12. I'll put these up here. You guys can take a look at them when you're done. See how you did versus the master. Once you get your floss on, you're going to bring your wings or whatever you want to call them. It's grasshopper, so I don't know what you call them, but bring it back, wrap it up, but keep it high. Keep, keep the extra gear hair high so you keep your bottom free and clean. So that's how your bottom profile should look. Your tail should be at the right length of your wings. I actually had three books and they all tied it the same way and looked at a couple of the, like on the RIFO and some of the other slide tying sites, they all tied it the same way. But that's where I really, one of the reasons I, I would always watch Barry because I think he's a pretty innovative guy. He always does the basic patterns but puts his own twist on them, which I always found interesting. And as soon as we're done with this, hopefully you guys will see what I mean. Good finish. We're done.
So I think for the second one, we should do the same thing. I'll tie one when you guys are ready. And then we can tie together. Okay, I'll just get set up a little bit. And let me know when you're ready. Like I said, one of the things that led me down this path, <laughs> one of these things that led me down this path was wondering about his materials. So he uses nature spirits theory, right? So interesting story there, are times of COVID, right? So I find an online site that has all the different bits and pieces he needs, he told me to get. It's just nature spirits, copper here. So, I ordered it and I was blind subbed. Sounds like my industry. I work in the flower seed industry and they do the same thing. I was blind subbed this, which obviously looks nothing like this, right? So I ordered from another place and this stuff showed up. So one of these, this one, this is the one we're tying out of in your packets. This is a very, very good patch. This just kind of average. So that's the bummer of having to order online, right? I mean, there's this huge variation, basically. And in these times, they ship you what they want, not what you order. And then when you do order it, they ship you different quality. So anyhow, but this one is what we're tying with. It's a very good uh, coastal deer here. And I asked, you know, Nature Spirit on the website, says, oh, they're so customer friendly and all that stuff. And I asked them what the difference was between their hopper deer hair. And this is also supposed to be bleached, right? They didn't even respond. So I emailed Barry and he said, yeah, this is a different, you know, he has some long explanation about this is harvested at a different time of year. And nature, you know, he's obviously one of their uh, spokesmen, right? So this is their primo stuff from the deep of the winter, does long fibers, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that's the hair we're using. We're using a mustard, dry fly hook, 3X long. We are using medium round rubber legs. And the other thing, the thing that got me to talk to him in the first place was I figured he uses Persol silk and you can't buy it anymore, right? So I asked him what he was using. And he came up with some crazy French brand called Alvera Soy. So this is some French silk that he uses. So I figured, you know, we have, we have no excuses, guys. We have literally all the good materials that he uses. So the rest is on us. And I have had a heck of a head start because I practiced a lot, right? But let me show you what, uh, what he says to do. So first of all, you guys ever, are you familiar with gel spun poly? Have a lot of people used it. So it's very, 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 very strong. And he, this is what he always calls Dyneema. But Dyneema was, is the name of the brand. It's like DuPont Teflon. So Dyneema now sells as Vivas. That's the name we use, right? So Vivas comes in white and black. You have to mix the colors into the thread. So what Barry has done, and uh, I haven't, but what he's done is he's just gone to white thread for everything. He uses 100 denier. Uh, and markers, right? So he uses a pack of markers like this. There's his different colored threads. So to be true to form, I thought I would do the same thing. Uh, use the white 100 denier uh, anema or Vivas in this point. So it's a very slick thread. So you got it, and it's very strong, which he likes because for him, if you, if you, you now have if you ever watch him tie in a video too, his hook's going like this all the time, back and forth. So he ties with a whole lot of tension because you literally can't break this stuff. It's literally stronger than steel. So you wrap it back. The downside is it's slick. But he gave me a tip for that. So you wrap it back, that's very slick. So what he does is with tension, Brings it back like he's counter wrapping a tinsel or something. 
So back to your tie-in point. Now, if you feel that, if you guys want to try that when you do it, you now have a texture there. So that's one thing that helps in controlling the spin. You add super glue, but super glue doesn't dry fast enough. So take the same thing about a somewhere around 12 to 20. You'll notice when you feel this fur versus the last, not fur, deer hair versus last deer hair. This is just better stuff, right? There's hardly anything under it. Stack it. I mean, I didn't even have to clean it. Get your tips aligned. So here's the first thing that's totally different. Line up your, again. So you want to be about a half a shank back. Bring it to here. Cut it. Right? So now you got the right length, but it's very short. And he grabs it once, then immediately flares it, because you can put a lot of pressure on it. He flares it, then he wraps into the flares. So before he does anything, theoretically, if I've done this right, you've already locked down your twist. And you can do that because of the thread, which was what, what, why he likes this gel spun poly. Um, one warning, though, I, I had this in size 30, because I use it for small stuff. Because uh, I use Gordon Griffiths 14 and it's very, I'm just not good enough. It always breaks, right? So if I use bigger cord on small flies, it always builds up too much. So I grabbed a mine and used it and it immediately just cut the, cut the deer hairs, right? So if you go up to the larger size, even though you don't need the strength, it doesn't cut the deer hair. So that's 100, 150, but he, I, I got 100 and went with 100 and it seems fine. Completely different than using the 30. So you're coming back once again, holding it up with some tension. <laughs> this is going to flare because you got your tension. Bring it back around. You can trim these. And then capture them. Once again, Work on your whatever's escaped and focus on the back of the fly, not the top. And so obviously this has to use the floss because we're in the wrong color. We've built up this body. Second thing different, floss goes on now. You don't bring it all the way up. And you also notice it's truly a nicer floss, but it's six bucks a row, it's like, you really need it, but it's fun to find out if you need it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this here. And spin this around. Oh, I should cut that off, obviously. Hopefully I can capture the rest of that on the way back. Second tip, we flared this because we, we pulled it tight. And this is one of the things I asked him, how do you keep these things flat? Because if you look at his examples, see how flat everything is? So with all this tension on this spinning deer, I wondered how he did it. Second thing he told me is use your floss to, to, when you get back here, go loose, right? And if I do this right, I'm going a couple wraps into the hook point and I've flattened it out. Right? I mean, I got some escapees that I'm not going to worry about right now, but if I was home, I would stop and trim those out or rewrap or whatever to get rid of them. So that's one trick. So same thing. Tie this in. You don't lose it. I almost trimmed off the thread. That would have been fun. Trim that off and either pull it because it's so thin or trim it off. So that doesn't move like on my last fly that moved, right? So that's one difference. There's no glue on there. There's no nothing. It's just thread control and being able to really crank with this stuff. So now, next thing different, take your thread all the way to the eye of the hook. Now you can take, I still don't want to use all this, but that would be crazy big. There was also 
Remember, Jim had trouble with his tubes. One of these is going to work for you. One of these is bigger, one of these is smaller. So these are in the packet of number twos. So we're going to take off the gear here. Moment. And this stuff is, is such high quality that honestly, you don't even always have to stack it. But by stacking it, you can then pull out from the back and you can pull out from the front and get all the short ones because those are going to mess you up the way he does his. So measurements are the same. About a quarter inch in front, right? Turn this around so you gain control over it again. And I've kind of lost that base. So I'm going to stack by the tips. If you do this, it comes out a lot faster than if you stack by the, you know, the other way. So I don't know how many times I go to take that off and all my ear hair is there. So clean this up. Hold it on top where you want to go right, right. Once again, we would have been here, right? That's the quarter inch up. That would have been clean on the last time. So right away, you go once, twice, and he's going to spin it. From the get-go, he's going to spin it. And then he's going to tie back to gain control of it. And he doesn't let go. Come here, come in, and that's it. If you don't get this done, it doesn't matter that much. You can still clean it up. It's just a lot more to clean up. So he's going to have that under control then. Trim these back to your floss. Pull your hair down. You're going to find your shorter strands. Trim those out. And once again, this should be set, and thankfully it is. Once again, because of the thread and a different style of doing it, right? So here you're not really worried about getting all your butt ends in, but stack it up for your taper. And his uses the larger of these two. One's larger, one's small. Try it if you didn't get enough of here on the larger get on the smaller, but what he says is use a clear tube, go to the front, kind of work it back so it's gonna fold back nice. Put something clear on, you can see it, right? So that's his point is now you can see it. The length is right, uh, all the way back to where the thread is. Once again, go around and snug it in. So if you don't have, I mean, this is a good amount of hair, but if I didn't have much hair, as you're snugging this in, you can also cheat and push that forward. See how that became more of a ball? So I just have thread in one spot and it's gonna be everywhere, right? Next trip, rather than messing with it, take UV glue, this is a, a flow or thin, put it in now, Hit it with your, oh, wrong way, sorry guys, I just shined it on somebody. Hit it with your light, and now it lays nice and flat, right? So that was another thing I thought was pretty cool. It's one of the ones I asked him, like, how the heck do you do that if you're flaring it? So, oh yeah, and this is where you're supposed to color your thread. So, make your white dyneema, yellow or whatever other color you want. He does not go with a wide collar, but I hope the camera picks it up. And you see that yellow? Picks up really nice from that white. I mean, this would be the color of the thread. So it does indeed work. So you can use one, you know, this time of year, you can get these packs of multiple Sharpie pens, for like 20 bucks for 40 of them. So you get every color under the sun, one color thread, one less thing you have to stock, particularly, you know, if, if you're just starting up with this stuff you just get one color. So, what we're going to do that next is put in the legs. And this time you want them around, not halfway across. You want them three quarters of the way down. 
So you want this to define the underside of the fly. So once you, oh, I can't do that. I keep forgetting that. Got to put a couple of wraps because then when you move around this one, it just falls out. But I have a very thin thread base. I haven't made much width. So I'm going to bring that around and down and this around and down. I want to be about three quarters away around. So there's a quarter of the circle left. So he does not do the X with it. He just, I put a little more color on. All I got to do is whip finish and we're almost done. Okay, so it is finished. One, one more step. He goes under here and he just trims this hair away. So, I mean, it's up to you if you think this looks better or the classic way looks better, but that's gonna be what this one looks like. I personally like this nice round head and like I say, it's just completely and totally different way of doing it than the normal way of doing it. But you end up with the same fly, right? So that would be the original. That's the way he does it. So anyhow, we can try that and you guys can decide which one you like. Excuse me, uh, you I see you missing the book. Yes, I do. Everybody else got everything? Not bad. I just screwed up one pack. So I did find it interesting how different his style was to basically all the, at least the books I have and the videos, that way everybody else did it. And I really found it fascinating how open this guy is, right? He'll answer any of your questions. He's over, I don't know if he's in England or, or Finland or somewhere over there, but it's your typical European overnight thing, right? You leave him something and he answers, you'll have an answer in the morning. So lay down the thread base and try that open wrap back. See if you guys like it, even on normal thread, it just gives you a lot of ridges up there. And that, that was something that was new to me, right? I mean, it's always just been laid on your thread base and bring your thread back. There's no other purpose to it than to get the thread base. If you go back with some tension and open wraps, now you have texture. One to two dozen fibers or so for the tail. This time you're gonna measure and cut. You're gonna cut away the excess right away. Then pinch wrap and then flare it. And in the flare, take your thread back and lock it in. So hopefully, even with the slick stuff, you've got your twist under control already. Build up your body. Leaving the front quarter of your hook open still. You know, it's t it doesn't stack up much. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. You can come look at it if you want. It's it's 
this is 8 0, and it's a lot thinner than that. I mean, you literally can't, I mean, the hook breaks first, right? That's what's nice about it. Like I said, I use the. Uh, the thread? Um, it, it, they're available anywhere, but I. Uh, what's that? J Stockyard, Stockard, or whatever? They had everything but the silk. The silk I got from some guy in Pennsylvania. And that's the guy that blind shipped this stuff. It's called what? Gel Spontali. So this is the Divas brand. There's UTC and there's Divas and that Semperfly. That's the three brands that I saw. But Divas only sells it white and black because it, this stuff doesn't take up the dye. And I have the yellow from the other one that I used when I tied the hundreds. And it's actually varnish coated. And it builds up like a mother on your uh, barrel. We just completely clogs it. Same with the black. Yeah, yeah. So the black, when you get it from Vivas, it doesn't have any. So there's nothing on this. It's in the plastic. And the black's really a gray. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you can buy these packs. I was just amazed how cheap you can buy those Sharpie packs for. <coughs> Walmart has one right now, just under everyday pricing. 40 fine tips and 20 super fine tips for 20 bucks. Yeah. All right, so that's done. I definitely use it on small stuff because I'm just not good enough with small black threads or whatever. That's what I got, yeah. And don't go with the smaller stuff for deer here because it'll just cut right through it. I mean, it's crazy. You're doing this, right? And they're just falling off in front of your hands. <laughs> what the heck? Sometimes any size girl spot will crack. Correct. Correct. Okay, so if you remember on this one, we're going to flare right away. One pinch, two pinch, pull it. Right. Yeah, you're going to flare it right from the get go. <laughs> well, actually, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I told you I wanted to practice, right? I really was curious that with the right material, could I do it? I passed up kids. And I'd actually sent this in that, you know, told Mark I would tie this before the uh, list came out. This is, Dyneema is a Dutch company, and it's basically a tactical thread. So can you see all those bulletproof vests? So it competes with Kelvar. Kelvar is heat resistant. This stuff melts. But it's used like an, an, an outdoor gear, and you know, it's just sewing thread. And you can actually buy it in sewing thread to write the mirror, but it's on those big rules, big spools. But this like, I mean, this is like three or four bucks, but you get those big sewing threads, for like 12 bucks, but then you would have to re-spool it. Yeah. Well, maybe not because you're using all the colors. I'll put a real fat stack of deer hair on that big tube. Yeah, works good, huh? Yeah, so what he says is like this one barely holds it, right? That little one would hold this because I didn't use enough air this time. Actually, the wrong one still. This one. See, if you screw up, you use the small one like I did. They're pipette tips, disposable pipette tips. And yes, they're all new, so don't worry about it. 
I work in, I do, part of, I use them in my work all the time. Or for pulling out the, you know, instead of manually measuring small volumes of liquid, they'll be on the end of the way pet. Yeah, they work good for that though, don't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what am I forgetting? But it is interesting how different, you end up with the same fly basically, but done completely differently. So after I went through this experience, I said, oh, what the heck, I'm gonna buy that book. So my plan is pick a couple of those. I still have in the pack some of the, some of the originals, right? So I have the video, the book, and you know, he says just email and pictures and stuff. So it's like having a, you know, I mean, that's how I do music lessons, right? Online music lessons. And I'll 16 bucks for the book. How can you go wrong? Well, it's hard to believe that the first batch is very fast up to number one. It was really beautiful, it's so strong. Well, it came from a grab bag. Who knows what it was from? I, I did that, you know, because honestly, what I wanted to, you know, is the stuff I have holding me back, or is it my skills? Obviously, it's my skills, right? <laughs> I didn't think it mattered all that much, right? The materials, I don't think the floss mattered. On this fly, I don't think it did. No, on any fly, really, because, you know, it's a natural material, it's inconsistent. And it fights you, you know, why fight, if you're trying to hide a fly, why do you have to chase I agree with you, Mark. Yeah. I agree with you. I mean, when you get the feathers and stuff like that, but. <laughs> Six bucks for a spool of, uh, of floss, pretty stuff. I can just throw out my wife's soul. Exactly. So anyhow, that's what we have. Great.